if you found him tonight. What then? I remember uh, walking up the street, um, counting off the numbers, knowing I was getting closer and closer, and my stomach getting tighter and tighter as I got nearer and nearer. And then I got to the door, and I couldn't go in, so I kept walking. And that's something I never forgot. With a name like Gaze the Word written over the door, lesbian and gay bookstore, it takes guts to walk in. Of a love that's free, a time when dreams so long denied can flourish as we unveil the love we now must hide. Gaze the Word came out of Gay Lib in the 70s and the emergence of gay bookstores in the States. The people who set up the shop were ballsy individuals. It was a very deliberate strategy on their part to choose a name, Gaze the Word. This was not about hiding away. And they had problems, you know, getting a lease initially. Um, so it was like, Gaze the Word? What's this going to be? Uh, this is a residential neighborhood? Is this a sex shop? Because the, the notion of an ordinary bookstore that just happened to stock lesbian, gay, and feminist books, you know, was completely new. For this bookstore to open this country finally meant that people had the right to access their own ideas. It's also been very practically important in terms of advice, support, help for the gay community. To be able to come to a bookstore and have a book or a series of books available to you that that make you feel less fraught, that make you feel less sort of alone, I think it's, it's really a wonderful, important thing. When it was founded back in 1979, half of it was a meeting space and the rest was, was books. Uh, over the years that changed as more and more books became available and other publishing houses uh, came into being. Well, the shop was always seen from the very beginning not simply a bookshop, but uh, as a community resource. Because we have to remember that 20 years ago, 26 years ago, there was still a lot of, um, of anti-gay feeling. And there was Gay's The Word as a kind of beacon, a lighthouse, if you like, circling round and saying, well, hang on a minute, we're here, we're queer, and we're staying. And that was, I think, fantastically culturally important to many people of my generation and I think the generation that came before me. I think this is the most wonderful resource for the lesbian and gay community. I think there is nowhere that you would get this much printed matter about our community anyway. Um, the, I know that the lesbian discussion group has been a lifeline for many women. Lots of people come when they're first coming out. It's a safe place. There's no loud music. You can actually talk to people. Um, and we sort of nurture people along. I like the fact that a whole range of people use the bookstore from, you know, 16 to 90. Uh, so it's a, a reflection of the whole lesbian and gay community. We get lots of calls from parents, um, you know, mums whose sons have just come out and you may be the first other gay person that they've talked to. And sometimes it's just they want the book, but other times they're talking to you for 20 minutes. And it's really interesting.
I think it's difficult for people of my generation to really truly envisage what it used to be like to be a gay man or a lesbian um, in London or anywhere in the country uh, because things have changed, things have really changed and, uh, and thankfully so. We had to be secretive, not everybody was brave about telling other people who they were or even acknowledging themselves, it was a scary time. So it was very brave I think for the guys who opened this in the first place. We provided lesbians and gay men with the information they needed uh, about their own lives and about how to organize their lives and how to define their lives. And I think without that, uh, life would be very, very much different for an awful lot of people. In the early 90s, general bookstores started gay sections. And one part of me is very pleased they did because it means if you're a young gay man or, or a lesbian and you walk into a bookstore, you may see this section, you know, lesbian and gay, and there's a validation there. But obviously that affects our business. You can now get gay books everywhere, whereas when we started you couldn't. People no longer physically have to go to Gaze the Word to buy the books. Um, so it, in one sense, it is a a very sad casualty of better times, and that's a terrible paradox.